St. John chapter 2 and St. John chapter 8. Uh, read out of Mark chapter 2 first. And then uh, we'll jump over to St. John chapter 8. And we'll be reading out of there. Lord willing. Good place to be. Uh, thank God for the privilege. Uh, thank God for a good church, Gary. God's blessed us with a good place to worship, good people to worship with. Thank God for those 11 folks that decided or chose to take membership this morning. Uh, I tell you what, I hope you enjoy the church, and uh, the church is a blessing to you. I believe, I believe with all of my heart uh, that you'll be blessed for your work. Uh, thank God for the ministry. Uh, for this YouTube that's going out, we get a lot of good comments, get a few bad ones. <laughs> uh, some is, uh, you know, some of, some folks think that there's, uh, you know, we could do things different, probably better, and you know we could. Uh, but I'll tell you what, we're just, a, just an old country church. And for you folks that's looking in, I ain't talked to y'all. Uh, very much, so you've figured out where we're from. We're from the mountains. Uh, some people says you ones. I don't know where they're from. I say y'all. It got me in trouble one time. I've told a story a few times. Jeremy's buddy and some of them ain't heard it. Uh, went to Denver, Colorado one time. Didn't want to go. Uh, my mother asked me to help my dad drive. Uh, I was. I always like to drive. But uh, went down there and went through St. Louis and Kansas City. I'd never been on roads. Back then, that was in, uh, Lord, that's for us married, 78, 77, somewhere along there. I was still wet behind the ears. But uh, went down through there, Gary. Back then, it's hard to tell. I ain't been out there since out west. Back then, it was six lanes of traffic both ways, some of those cities. I think the speed limit was 60. If you didn't do 90, you was a, a dead dog. Yes, sir. And I eat that up, boy. You go through there. Daddy over there in the passenger seat, we'd get to the, getting ready to come through those cities, and he'd pull over. He said, I watched the map and the signs, and you steer. And I said, all right. But went out there and uh, with my mom and dad and my uh, two youngest sisters, went out there and uh, to Lowry Air Force Base. My aunt's husband was stationed there. He retired from the Air Force. A pretty boring week, Gary. Pretty, I forget how many days. One day we went to the pool. Let my girlfriend back here and was having a terrible time, I thought. And, and the hall and got out there and walked down to the pool with my uh, two cousins and my two sisters. Was sitting there just looking around. Spotted these two pretty girls from Colorado. And I said, well, this week might not be too bad after all. Uh, so they started coming my way and I started putting on that Colgate smile. And got over there, Gary, and I thought everything was going to work out fine until I opened my big mouth and said, how y'all doing? <laughs> you talking about laughing? Those girls laughed uncontrollably, and that was the rest of the story. So my week continued to be uh, very bad. But uh, anyways, I am what I am. And uh, uh, folks might look at this. They, they, we've had good comments on Jenna's video. And they might think that we're a big city church. We're not. We're in a little coal camp in the hills of Boone County in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. But we got a good church. And got, you can have this too. You sure can. If you're attending a dead church, if you're in a place where you ain't getting fed, get out of there and get you something that's alive because Jesus is alive. Amen. I believe that to all my heart. Those folks drown up Gary and it's their own fault. Praise the Lord. I believe in supporting your home church. I believe in being there. But if they ain't doing nothing for you, get out and get you somewhere. And I realize, Gary, that there's folks that, that, that ain't satisfied nowhere. 
Now they got a problem. They sure do. But I believe after so long, after we give a place a trial, or we test the place so long there, and folks don't want to praise the Lord, they just want to form in a fashion. I just believe a person ought to move on and give them a place to where they can grow, Gary, and be fed. Yes, sir. I believe that with all of my heart. Enough of that meddling, but it's the truth. It sure is. And some of you preachers that ain't satisfying your flock, you need to feed them. Amen. Amen. And you need to give them something that'll stir. Amen. Quit that dead preaching. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Good commercial. Yeah. I might get the edited out, but that's all right anyway. Get some mail now, won't we? All right. St. John chapter 2 and verse 19. Gary and I was on the phone last night, and he about preached, and I did too. And this thought come out of our phone conversation. Jesus answered them, verse 19 of chapter 2 of John. Jesus answered them and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Now, I want you to listen. Keep that on your mind now. He said... Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll rise it up. Now, over in verse 8, or chapter 8, verse 36, let you slip over there. Chapter 8, St. John, verse 36. It says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Yes, sir. Back, in, you don't have to turn back to 2. But he said, destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it up. Verse 36 of chapter 8 said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Gary, the Word of God said that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And I believe with all of my heart, David said, Though I make my bed in hell, thou art with me. Gary, I believe he, he'll go. He's already went. But he'll go to the deepest depths to rescue a lost person when they desire to be set free. I believe with all of my heart, I don't know about you, but I know my own story. And I know my own situation, Gary. I was in the muck and the mire. I was way down in the pit when Jesus Christ come to get me and come to rescue me. And a way of speaking, Gary, when he came to me, he got filth all over him just to rescue me. There's not a parent, Gary, in this church when our children is in trouble or it don't matter, Gary, how deep of a mud hole is it. It don't matter what we got on or our Sunday go to meeting best or whatever. If our children falls in a mud hole and they can't get out, we as a parent, through the love that we have, We'll get down in there with them, Gary, and we'll rescue them, and we'll pick them up. But my goodness gracious, my mama tells a story quite often. When we was growing up, me and my daddy was pals. And, and Gary, I had, when I was just a little boy, I had to stand in a front seat with my arm around his neck and be real close to him. After I got too tall to be there and I couldn't stand in the front seat, Gary, I got in the back seat, but I had to stand behind my daddy with my arm around his neck. And for years I got car sick everywhere we went. Mommy had to take me extra clothes, but I wanted to be so close to daddy. Guess what, Gary? She had to take him clean clothes too. Because when I got sick, it got you what a lot of folks Gary the reason they don't get to victory is because they're not ready to move when Jesus comes and boys when he comes to pay us a visit Gary and hears our crime distress listen don't plan on him 
stand and set no 